if you understand how the mind works it's easy to draw attention to the right places at the right time so in this video we are going to talk about real life examples and ui examples on what stands out and why let's check it out Let's start with similarity. Similar objects tend to have same functionality and our mind perceives them as so. Now, when we look at these two markers, we know automatically that, hey, if this marker can write on a whiteboard and this has a thick tip to write, then automatically next time I see this in the marker shop, I know what this does because they look pretty similar. On the contrary, if we actually look at two other markers, which pretty much do the same job, but let's say this one has a smaller tip. So now we know that every time I'm going to look at a marker like this, I know that I can expect a smaller tip to be there. If I look at a marker like this, I know I can expect a bigger tip to be there. Today, you will see all the the big design companies and big design teams using design systems. That is why we have design systems in place because every time if we define this is how our heading looks or this is how our primary button looks, this is how our secondary button looks and we continue to use it across the ecosystem, people automatically start expanding expecting that, okay, this button is supposed to work in a certain way. In fact, you can actually experiment with similarity. You can do the exact opposite because similar items tend to look same and they are tend to be perceived as a part of a group. You can actually make something stand out if it's not similar to the rest of the group. So then automatically my attention goes to this marker, which is not same with the rest of the law. So make sure to use this law to your convenience and make things stand out in your design. Now, since we are talking about making things stand out, the next one is my favorite law. It's figure and ground. Tell me what do you see in this image? Do you see two people or do you see a was? Our mind can very easily distinguish between what is an object versus what is on background. And this concept can be beautifully executed throughout our designs. When you look at a screen and there are various cards versus when you look at a screen where there is a pop-up, you can immediately tell where the attention goes. The design and product industry today is heavily dependent on these pop-ups because they immediately draw users' attention to that one area of the screen. So how does one really make something stand out? There are three ways to do that. First is color or contrast. When you look at this image, you can very easily tell that these two elements are at a different layer or one element is perceived to be in the foreground and one element is perceived to be in the background. It's because of the extremely high color contrast between the two elements. Now, if there is a low contrast of colors, it's very difficult to pick between two items and what is foreground and what is background. Another way of doing that is size. So let's say if there is a small object versus a big object behind that, it's very easy to create a contrast. The third most important way to create a contrast is blur. If I blur out the elements in the background and I keep the sharpness, your attention immediately goes to that object. And why do you think that's important? Because sometimes you really want your user to pay attention to certain items. For example, if you do a destructive action, like you're deleting an account or deleting the data or wiping off the data of your system, you want to have a confirmation pop-up. And according to the design of the product, they want your attention to be there on the pop-up irrespective of whatever you're doing on the screen, all your attention is brought to that pop-up because here the action you take might have an immense impact on your overall experience of the product. Now, since we're talking about how to create a contrast, let's take a step back and understand how do we even create groups? How do we make things look like they're associated to each other? Well, it's all about spacing. The closer you place items, the more they are tend to be perceived as a group. Now, for instance, let's look at the marker example again. Even if these two markers look very similar and these two markers look different from this group of markers, now, the way I place them changes everything. Now you see how two of these tend to look like a group, whereas two of these tend to look like a group. The closer the things are, the more they are tend to be in a group. Whereas now if I separate them away and make these two in a group, you will see suddenly the group has changed. Pacing, pauses or gaps changes everything. Now let's look at some great examples in our UI. When you look at a heading and when you look at a body content, if they are further away from each other, do you think you can perceive them as one group? Where do you think this heading belongs? Where do you think this text belongs? Do you think it belongs to the group above it or do you think it belongs to the content below it? Hmm, that's difficult, right? But let's say we fix the space spacing. Let's say we bring it closer to the contents that are below. Now suddenly they look like a group. How 
close you place items to each other are tend to be perceived as a group for instance if i'm designing a form if the input fields versus the titles are not placed close to each other this can be the exact difference between does it take me 2 minutes to fill a form or does it take me 10 minutes to fill a form now in this competitive world we do not want our users to spend so much time on small tasks because what is stopping them from going to our competitors so let's save their time as much as we can pro tip leading plays a very important role in your design and how much time it takes for the person to go through your design whether it is a poster or whether it is a ui leading totally defines how much time a user spends on reading and understanding your information also if you're planning to experiment and learn more about proximity and spacing make sure to check out my video on games for designers there is a game that i have mentioned in that video which you can definitely use for improving your ui and design skill proximity happens to be one of them a classic example of proximity is the unilever's logo if you look at it there are small little elements placed in the logo but since they are all clubbed into a bigger form that is u you will perceive it as one big fat u because of the proximity of the items that are placed there next up we are going to talk about continuity do you know something interesting about our eyes our eyes tend to look at the smoothest flow and continue to follow the pattern as long as it lasts so let's look at a classic example of continuity if you look at this image you can see how our eyes tend to ignore the color and continue to follow the form this can be really used to draw your users attention in a certain direction in fact continuity as a law is one of the biggest factors that have been used in most of our digital apps and products that we use today similarly when you go to instagram and you look at the half cut images you know that this is a vertical scroll in fact the principle of continuity is the one that helps us understand whether we have to scroll left or right whether we have to swipe left or right another really interesting example is instagram or any social media app that we use we cannot stop controlling ourselves from scrolling mindlessly we don't even realize how time has just passed by do you know why this happens this is because somewhere our mind knows and anticipates that there is more that i'll keep on getting when i keep on scrolling or i keep on swiping on those images and carousels and hence our eyes keep on looking for that next item in a row so now you know how to use this principle to the best of its ability now it's the time to move on to the most interesting one of them all it's the law of common region we tend to see elements placed in the same container as a group what's more interesting is we tend to assume that these elements will have the same character or function that is why carpet plays an important role in the interior design industry today interior designers use carpets to define spaces and to define what that space is meant to do for example a coffee table and a sofa will be put under one rug that signifies that this is a space where once you enter you can sit and have coffee here you can find some similar examples in the ui industry today designers are using the slot to its maximum advantage by applying borders by giving a background color or even using shadows do you think you have seen this example somewhere Hmm I'm pretty sure you're thinking of cards. Yes, that is right. All the cards that we see today, in fact not just cards, it's the tiles and in even in tables that we see today, we are seeing the law of common region being used. Every time you place multiple elements on a card, this seem to be a part of a group. And let's say you are a product company who wants to show their features, you're going to put all of the different features which might have different colors, which might have different size, which might have different orientations. Once you put them all on the same card they suddenly become a part of a group in fact the most interesting fact about this is it overrides similarity and it overrides proximity so even if you have two elements placed closer to each other that can be perceived as group and if you divide it into two sets and put them under different backgrounds they will actually be perceived as two separate groups that was not the case with proximity in fact go ahead and try this experiment so if you can see in this example there are different kinds of objects and they can be classified in a very different manner using similarity but now let's put a background behind it and see what happens voila did you see the magic suddenly this group stands out even if it has a completely different set of objects and that's how you can use your designs to show visual hierarchy and how a user should perceive the groups in fact can you think of a great example of this within your designs dashboards is the way to go if you have seen dashboards you can totally tell there are different kinds of graphs and charts and there is a lot of information that needs to be reflected together the best way to group that information is using a common region the minute you give a background outline or a shadow behind it it 
immediately becomes a group and now you know how to chunk your information and how the user is going to see them. And the more you look at these day-to-day -day examples in your favorite apps and in your favorite websites, the more you're going to remember these laws. In fact, one of the best examples of common region is the pricing plans page. You can really see how adding a shadow or an outline to one particular pricing plan really makes it stand out from the rest of them. Now I'm sure you're going to get better at focusing your users' attention in the right places. If you enjoyed this video about UI design, I'm sure you're going to love the video about UX laws as well. Until then, happy designing!